What would your suggestion to them be? I would tell them start off a 5K. Start off a 5K and if they love it, keep doing it, keep pursuing it, and then challenge yourself to a 10K. And then challenge yourself to a half marathon. I think once you get that love for it, there's no stopping it. Wow, we would have never believed it. We're on Spotify, we're on Apple, we're on Google. Go out there and listen to us, so we're excited about it. We're glad you're excited about it too. Muscles matter. I'm here with my friend Steve Southers and my uh, ministry partner, Christine Purcell. Hi. She works at the church, but we're here today talking about muscles because they do matter, right, Steve? Yes, they do. Yeah, Steve's sporting a pretty cool shirt today. If you uh, want one of those shirts, you might have to wait. But he has two other orders in, and where would they pick these up You at? can find them at Sportlander West. We're located at 7420 District Boulevard, right across the street from Nestle Ice Cream. Come on by, and uh, hopefully we got one left over for you still. Yeah. They, they went like hotcakes. That, I love that, Steve. Or, I should have said donuts. I, I missed the cue. Uh-huh. <laughs> Hot donuts. I missed the cue. <laughs> you, you know what's, what, what's crazy is, you know, Steve uh, always comes in, and he... He's, of course, he's large, and and he's always put together, but he has the coolest shirts. Yeah. He really does. And I'm so, a nerd at heart. Well, we are. I took that Toys R Us kid thing yeah. to, for, like, serious. I, I just, I'm not growing up. That, that <laughs> giant giraffe <laughs> told me I didn't have to grow up. I am not growing up. So if, if you want to have fun watching TikToks, watch his TikToks. All right. <laughs> okay. But he does get banned because he talks about Christian material a lot, so he, they, they ban him, too. So, Steve, you did a great job with the shirts, and... Uh, you know, he's always very innovative. And with Christine, we're here with Christine, and we've done lunch break, and we've done Ministry Matters. And now we're doing lunch break, uh, and we're doing Muscle Matters because Christine just finished the Boston Marathon a week ago. Yes. Congratulations Thank again. You. There again, Christine uh, joined, I think they said on the news, 14 yes. people from Bakersfield, and they all come from your running club. Yes, the Greyhounds. Wow, what yeah. a successful thing, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we talked about on Ministry Matters and Lunch Break on how you guys help each other, mm -hmm. you know, and, and uh, you depend on each other to help show up. That's like a workout partner, right, Steve? That, most important, yeah. Somebody yes. Somebody uh, put the weight back. Yeah. <laughs> and they got and they've got to be able to keep up because uh, yeah. yeah so so Christine um, you 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 finished in the top ten percent yes congratulations thank you and you qualified for next year I did qualify for next year so that's that's a that's kind of a, a load off your mind I remember Steve competing at a local level when I was in L A cracking the local level then competing in Southern California then competing in the state then going into the nationals then going to the world so so. Every time you take a step up, you actually are able to kind of adjust things, yes. right? And and we talked a little bit on the show some adjustments, but she was telling me, Steve, that the hills. Actually, she said the app deceived her, right? It did deceive me. So whoever's in charge of the app, you need to fix the app. Now is that the app to map out the Boston yes. the marathon itself? It said it was like a net downhill, but it was all uphill. <laughs> Well, so they got to get you to run yeah. somehow. <laughs> so it was tough. Yeah. So, so as, as your training progresses this year, what are you going to uh, um, 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 challenge your body with going forward? I mean, you know, Steve and I know how to, um, we just got to go over and grab heavier weights. But now you've got to run up hills mm -hmm. and you've got to increase that. So how, tell us how I, the mechanics behind that. Well, I already know what I need to do for next year. I need to do more uphills, but I need to do some weight training. Oh, you um, know the right guy right so here. So I do need to incorporate that because you won't want to have a strong core. And all I was doing before was just band workouts because I figured that would keep me from not getting injured, just working on those different muscles, the like glutes and hamstrings. But I am going to start doing some weights because a lot of the professional athletes, you can tell they do weights. Well, I can't think of a better person that's sitting to your left yeah. than that's interesting. I mean, I, I, that's 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 a good challenge to figure yeah. out exactly, because in your profession you don't want to add an extra pound, but yeah, you've got to get the density. Well, you'll be surprised of how many different sizes there are when it comes to running. They're not all just lean. I, I've seen some girls that are a little heavier, but they're muscular and they actually can run faster than the skinny person. So I do want to put a little bit more muscle on my body. 
So you're um, saying there's hope for Steve. There is hope for Steve, yes. And being a runner. I think he's got, he has a lot of wind resistance and um, just on the broad shoulders. I wear running shoes. Does that count? <laughs> yes. But I do want to put a little bit of muscle on. I wouldn't mind gaining like maybe five to ten pounds of muscle. So. Yeah. So, so I have a question for you. You were saying qualifying, and it, 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 what you were saying, you know, I, when you get to the ne- when you get to our level, you if you qualify if you get a certain placing in the top, yes. you don't have to go back into the pit mm-hmm. to do a local oh, show like to requalify yeah. again. How do you qualify for the Boston? I qualified at Boston. So, but if you didn't qualify, I, I would have to do another marathon. Uh, that's a Boston. That's a qualifier for Boston. Okay, so, so there's certain there's ones. certain uh, marathons here in California that you would have to find out are acceptable for the Boston Marathon. So I am thinking about doing uh, the CIM Marathon, the Sacramento one, in December, um, just because I want to challenge myself and get in a faster time. Because if I get a, a little bit faster time, I'll uh, start in a different corral at Boston. Okay. Like, so even though I've qualified, I want to get a better time to get in a better. Uh, get more towards the front? Yeah, well, um, a better alignment. Okay. Like as in starting. Yes. She told because me it was like running in an elevator crowded with people. I, I've turned it on and seen like the start that if it's, you're it's not there, crazy. it's, yes. That's a lot of energy being wasted, especially for you being a, an elite runner. That's a lot of energy being wasted trying to ping pong through the people that are yeah. quite. You are wasting a lot of energy doing that. Yeah. So if I do another marathon and get a faster time, I could be in a different um, corral with different, um, a better time. Yes. So that would help. Yes. That that's, just seems like it would just make, it makes more sense. I mean, yeah. you only want to draft the people that are worth drafting. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and trust me. The ones uh, that beside you are yeah. really healthy, yes. right? Yes. Weaving through that is hard. Uh, I mean, I just, that doesn't even sound fun. So yeah. I'd be a bull in a china shop and I'd get kicked out. I think that's what you you all the time. Steve, yeah, so. I, I just weave to the nearest yogurt shop. <laughs> <laughs> so Steve, let me put you on the spot here. So as you have a person like Christine come to you, what would be a recommendation for an elite athlete to uh, incorporate weight training in into her running? It would be different. You wouldn't, um, of course, you're always going to stay, what you said, you had to have course. So there would be some sort of a squatting movement. Okay. But most of the movement would be a little more of single leg dynamic type of movements because squatting on two legs doesn't do you any favors because you need to get the glutes, the hamstrings, yes. the, the, the shins. You got to work on shin splints, calves. You have to have everything. So everything for her would be, mimicking a running motion okay we're making running motion um sled work would be awesome um no different than training alignment it's sled work front and rear because you you need to build up the muscle where it's running and explosive Mm -hmm. but you also have to work on the white fiber versus the red because she needs that density not the not 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 to being wide you need the density Mm -hmm. so i it'd be interesting be interesting yeah he's up for a challenge christine okay (laughs) It's it, I always like doing I'm, adding to the repertoire, isn't it? Yeah, Steve? I get so when anytime anybody comes at me, they go, "Hey, I got something new for you." I think it's awesome because now it's like my brain has to work because yeah. I can do bodybuilding with my eyes closed. Okay, <laughs> when, and power lift. Yeah, it just I'm, I'm, there. It is. Okay, bye. I'm done with that one. When I have to think about it and have to actually do research, I love that because it gets me to go down a rabbit hole. Yeah, I am ready for it. I like it. So, so Christine, as as your training is uh, changing and you're trying to get the faster time to um, move up, talk to us a little bit about running injuries, because you and I've talked in the past, and Steve and I've done many a shows where we've told you guys it's not if you get injured, it's when you yeah, get injured. Yeah, it's when you do. Do, do. do you do you have any moments where you're like, I remember when I was 21 and I um. I, I tweaked my right knee, which needed surgery, and stem cells helped me uh, help me and not mm-hmm. avoid that. But I, I remember that it's in my head. I remember where I was at. I remember when I did it. I was just like, "Do you ever remember an injury?" Um, yeah. Um, every once in a while, my IT band flares up, and that's because I have a weak glute. So, I um will try and look up exercises that could help me strengthen my glute to have that um to support my hips that are sub- connecting to my knee. So whenever it would flare up, I would ice for like 30 minutes, heat, ice, heat. And then I would foam roll 
And then if I had to take a day off, I would take a day off just to like completely let my leg just rest. That is a very intelligent so. athlete, isn't it, Steve? Yes. It's, it's but almost I would, instinctive training. I, I would direct. Rest. And then if that wasn't the case, if like it still kept hurting, then my next thing was, okay, I got to go see a sports chiropractor. Go have them adjust me, scrape me. Those people are and awesome. Then I had to go see a massage therapist, a sports massage therapist, and she would work me out and like make you cry, like spots that she would hit you, and then she would tell you, okay, you need to work on this. That's why you're weak. So, so I would have to find those weak spots. So, 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 so as we're talking out there, I mean, as people demand more out of their bodies, they're also having to take better care of their bodies. Mm -hmm. And I think people that neglect that end up with serious injuries. Yes. You know, and, and I think if you're out there, you know, you're, you're hearing this, but it's worth investing in yourself. Oh, it is. Yeah. Be, be, because as you, as you do come through those injuries, you know, do, do you have a philosophy, Christine? Um, you know, and I know Steve in my industry, um, we never could afford to take time off. So... There's always a theory working through the injury. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not sure it's smart or not, but you still had to do it. Is there, I mean, is there is there a merit of thought behind the running game with that at that elite level? Yeah. Um, if I had to take time off from running, I would do something else to incorporate some sort of ac activity. I would focus on maybe my upper body with weights, um, so I'm not focusing on my lower body. So I always do something that's going to, even yoga. I started doing yoga just to like help with stretching because I'm terrible at stretching. Did, did it help? It did. It did. So you got to find something. And I even taken some Pilates classes too, which help as well. Yeah. So, so, so it's interesting, Steve, because you're doing something to support another activity. Mm -hmm. So, so, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, people that, you know, you can't be a one trick pony. Yeah. Run, 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 rerun, run, run, run. It's you have to change it up. Yeah. And I mean, if I could, I would run all the time. Yes. But I mean, sometimes your body just breaks down. Because that's the easy part, right? Steve, lifting weights, the easy part. Yeah. That's the fun part. <laughs> yes. And running for you is the fun part. Yeah. It's, yeah. Talk, talk to us a little bit about nutrition. Because one of the things that I, I think Steve and I probably miss out on the advantage of. What you're doing mm -hmm. is, you know, and you're doing so much of it, you're losing a lot of body fat. So yes. you, so you, the calories you put in your body, you probably don't worry about calories. It's the quality. Yeah. I mean, gosh, I know a lot of people, they, they keep track of their food intake and I just eat. I uh -huh. mean, I, I eat because like, I know I have to eat a lot. That's going to help me with tomorrow's run. I yeah. feel like every day I've had to carb load for the next day. If that makes sense. Oh, yeah. No, I, I mean, like, that. That's what we always I, talk I about. I would burn, I'm not kidding, like 2,000, 2,500 calories in a, in a workout. And I would think, gosh, I got to like put more in me because running, you used to lose so much weight and you're losing muscle too. So like lifting weights, is kind of hard because you're constantly. That, that's losing. hard for Steve and I to hear. Yeah. Losing muscle. Oh, that, that's, I mean, I, I, I'll lose it fast. So, but if I do a lot of hill workouts, it kind of helps build that muscle back up. But eating is something I don't ever, I don't ever tell myself I can't have it. I just eat it because I know it's going to help me. You're, you're going to burn it off. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I like how you said that you're eating for tomorrow. Yeah. Yes. That is so hard to make people understand. You're not eating for today. Yeah. When you're an athlete, you're eating for tomorrow. And it's and helping you, me recover. If you don't fuel up, tomorrow's going to suck. Yeah, exactly. So Steve, Steve always tells people you have to become a professional eater. Yeah, you do. You know, and, and, and for some people that may be hard to, to take, but it, it is. I, I love I love how you incorporate all these aspects. You incorporate what you do, you incorporate weights, you incorporate nutrition, and you incorporate a support um, um, therapy. Yes. Like Pilates, yoga, um, the chiropractor, mm -hmm. the scraping. It's it's one of those things that you almost at a point your body becomes a commodity. Mm -hmm. Have you felt that? So, it, it, yeah, I, I, it's a necessary, you have to do it. Yeah. Well, it, you know, so, so we've talked about, you know, how you, your routine is you wake up 
and try not to wake the rest of the family yeah. up, right? <laughs> we don't know anything about that, Steve, right? <laughs> you know, my wife always like, could you be quieter? Yeah. Like, <laughs> I'm like a ninja. <laughs> it, but, it, and you go out and you step out your door and it's raining. Mm -hmm. It could be cold, foggy, or it could be one of those sultry 90 degree mornings, right? Yes. But you still have to go out. Yes. We at least get to go into air conditioning or at least climate control yeah. to work out. The rain. Yes. That part right there. Yeah. I made it sugar. I'd melt. Yeah. And, and so I, I love what Christine said. She even shared on, I think, lunch break that you sleep in your running gear. I do. I sleep in my running clothes. I, it, 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 I slept in my workout shorts and got up the next morning because I'm going to save a few minutes. But that, that was very interesting yeah. to me. If I could, I'd sleep with my shoes on too, lace that. <laughs> Just ready to go, yeah. huh? <laughs> because morning's precious. I mean, you get up, mm -hmm. you're out the door by 4.30, yep. you know, and you're running 26 miles. Now, are we, before we get up and run, is there any uh, nutritional intake? Uh, yeah, I actually do. I'll eat like a banana or a bagel before I run. Mm -hmm. And I take um, like a, it's like a recovery drink that you told me about, um, that CC. Oh, uh, um, it's some sort of recovery drink. You told me about yeah. it. So I take that powder. Probably intake. heard it from him. It's like a, it helps you with your runs and it helps you to recover your muscle tissues. Mm -hmm. So I drink that before I run. And then when I'm done running, I do another scoop up and take it. And then I do my collagen too. MCT. Yeah. MCT oil. Yes. So um, I always make sure I try to eat. Yes. Because I have to have energy to run. Well, now the MCT, that's the dense fat. So you are getting, it's a, you're getting the dense fat, which is going to help your body not consume itself during the run so yeah. just so people know what mct oil is that's well, it uh, yeah i just know that if it's effective you gotta listen to him yes that's why he runs the show all right that, that's that just want i didn't want i wanted people to understand even though you sleep in your running clothes yeah. you're just not like hey i'm up and out because yeah. somebody's gonna run 10 miles and try to figure out why they passed out yeah well i i i sleep in my running clothes because i that's part of me Part of my routine as in like motivating myself. Okay, I have it on, put on the shoes. And usually I pre-make a lot of my stuff so it's ready for me in the morning. So I just take it and I start drinking and eating. That's called meal So prep. And I've yes. told Pastor Tom been incorporating beet juice too. Keep the blood pressure down, keep everything yeah. going, yes. And and it, it, yes. And and it's not good, yes. okay. it doesn't taste good, yes. but I, I managed to drink it. Beet. So. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 would you say, Steve, that it'd be nitric oxide? Nitric, yes. It's a, it's a, it's an, you know, it opens a blood vessel. It's natural. Mm -hmm. It's a very natural way of opening the blood vessels, and it doesn't open it for a long time. That's, mm -hmm. uh, I, I could Steve see Steve's mind. I'm comparing it, yes. NO, the, and the, 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 the NO products to beet because I know what the beet juice is doing for yeah. you. Yeah. But I don't know how long the, I don't think the beet juice has a long. I don't know how long lasting. it lasts, yes. but I mean, I could feel it as I'm running, like, like, I could feel it as I'm running, like, okay, I could feel a little something. Yes. But I, I do take quite a bit of vitamins um, just to help me to recover, too. Now, are you taking your vitamins pre or post? Um, I take them afterwards, yeah. Yes, okay. I don't know if it is that what you're supposed to do. I like taking mine post because that is when your body's looking for all that nutritional dump. Okay. So it's a good time to take it post so you're as you're breaking down and your body's repairing itself. You're taking advantage of the vitamins. Okay. Is, is that the kind of the anabolic window? Quote unquote, yes. Yes. Some, That's someone, good to know. He's taught me that too. All my knowledge is old school. If I want new updates, yeah, I have to listen to him. In other, in That's other good than to know. That doesn't do it. Um, so, so as, as you're out there, I, I like what she said, Steve, is the fact that my running team depends on me. They keep me accountable. They keep them accountable. So when you go out to the run, do you guys have, you know, this is, this, you know, excuse me on this. Is there like, you know, f you know, for um, um, training, do you like have some people that pace for a while and then somebody else takes the pace? No. Or so our running team, we're all different levels. Mm -hmm. So usually like there's different groups, but we're all together, but we're all spaced out. They're called so, the Greyhounds. Yeah. So what I'll do, I'll, I'll challenge myself to run with a little bit faster group because if I challenge myself to run with a faster person, eventually I'm gonna, that's going to be easy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? If I keep doing it. 
So we all run at different levels of speed, uh, but no one on the Greyhounds is slow. I will say that. <laughs> Steve and I would not be able to join a group called the Greyhounds. They'd have to put a bell on me to figure out what happened to me. <laughs> I mean, we don't hear the bell. He died. Just go back. <laughs> I don't mean to say like in a bad way, but they're all fast. Well, they, when they asked you to be on their team, I'm sure they've been eyeballing you for a while. Yeah. You know, and they've eyeballed you because you were fast. Yeah. And it's like, you know, but you know, Steve, isn't that like you always want to re-up yourself? Put yourself around solid people to challenge yourself to get to the next I, level. You know, we talked about that once before. You got to have a partner that's worthwhile. Yeah. You know, if you have a partner that's 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 pulling you down, they'll never pull you forward, and you suffer. Mm -hmm. So it's good to be with a partner that's pulling you up, or at least looking you in the eye as you're running together, issuing the challenge. Yeah, exactly. You know, Christine, can you say that? Would you would you venture to say? that if you wouldn't have joined the Greyhounds, you may not have been in the Boston Marathon. Uh, yeah, I would say if I wasn't a part of the Greyhounds, I probably wouldn't make it to Boston. And, and would you say that that's because they did challenge you and gave a standard that you're able to meet? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I like that, Steve, because I think if you're out there and whatever you want to do, you know, whatever you're doing, you know, as um, Steve and I were talking, you know, about me, you know, realizing I was using the wrong weights today. I now have a choice to make, mm -hmm. either to stay at the weights that really got me today mm -hmm. or go backwards. Yeah. And, and and the old me wants to go forward, but the older me is like hesitant. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I do believe I'll, uh, I will keep going. I can't guarantee you yet. I'll let you know next week. But yes. uh, yeah. I, I, I feel the pressure inside. It's like you when you, when you first went to the Greyhounds, were you worried, like? Eh, yeah, a little, but. Can I keep up? That would be my. Yeah, thing. but I think. You just keep up with someone that's your pace, and then eventually, but I always challenged myself to like try to run with the faster girls, just because like I knew eventually it was going to help me, yeah. which it did. But you always you always want to level up. But the faster girls are in their twenties, and I'm in, I'm forty three. Well, you know what, Christine, yeah. let's talk about this because I was telling Steve, you do impress me. You always have. I've always told you this. Oh, for, you, you know, I, I, I always tell some of the people that I know, hey, I'd like to have you on the show because what you're doing is noteworthy. And uh, Christine ran in high school. We've talked about this on a, a lunch break at a catch up uh, show and Ministry Matters. And Christine then paused because she fell in love with the bass player. And <laughs> wonderful man, Chad plays in our worship team, but she went to listen to him and they fell in love, got married, had two kids and mm -hmm. decided to run again. Yes. And so that's admirable. You know, what would you, what advice would you give people out there who may have used to ran, run mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden are thinking, I'm going to, that, that spark starting to come back up. What would your suggestion to them be? I would tell them start off a 5k, start off a 5k and if they, love it, keep doing it, keep pursuing it, and then challenge yourself to a 10K, and then challenge yourself to a half marathon. I think once you get that love for it, there's no stopping it, really. But start off with 5K. Did that come back in that per in that same um, succession for you? Yeah, I mean, I started, gosh, I think I actually started off a half marathon. Um, when You're I was an overachiever. Yeah, but um, I just, I, I love distance running, but I would say... That's a weird thing for you and I, Steve. I know your head just went tilt. I don't like distance uh, driving. Well, you know what it is? It's um, it's just that peaceful moment. It's just you and no one else is bothering you. You clear everything out of your mind. So, do, so it's so, nice. So do you experience a runner's high? Yeah, I have. Yeah, you? Well, explain that to us. I mean, you know, I, <laughs> I'm not sure there's a workout high, but, I, you know... I, but I'm just saying, you know, it, it, explain that to a, a lay person like myself. Um, I have a, gosh, it's kind of hard to explain. It's just a feeling like you just feel great and like you're running and you're like, wow, I'm running this fast. And like you could just hold it and you could feel like you could just do that pace forever. Like it's just like a good feeling. Wow. What would you compare that to, Steve, in working out? I don't remember a good feeling when I was working out. I'm trying to like... <laughs> Maybe the accomplishment. Yeah, afterwards. Uh, it would be, I, I don't even, like, 
like for I guess it would be the pump, right? When you're yeah. doing uh especially a small muscle group, when you can feel that small muscle group and you can it's just a set where you hundreds. That would be the best doing or, or it might be when you're walking by the plate glass mirror, the mirror. and you and the reflections there and you go after the pump. <laughs> I, did, I, I didn't see that before. Yeah. You see the results. Yeah. 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 Well it, it's uh, that's why I love talking about people who do different fitness things. Steve and I have uh, uh, been able to sit down and talk to different athletes and and, 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 and enjoy or live vicariously through that thought. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, when, when I see people run, I know there's something to that runner's high. Yeah. I know there's something to that experience that is something that the runners are achieving. Mm -hmm. and, and it helps keep you motivated. Yeah. Right? yeah. Some people say we're a little crazy. Well, question. I, the children's that look on their face when mommy comes home with the medal or crosses the finish line. That it's the best feeling. I was telling Pastor Tom, like, that's part of the reason why, like, when I did the Boston Marathon, I wanted to show my kids that it, you're, it's, anything's, you're, you're capable of doing it. It's just how much work you want to put into it. It takes a lot of hard work, yes. a lot of consistency with your workouts and showing up to get there and, like, just, just for them to see me finish. Like it was so awesome. Like they so they were there on. with you. Oh yeah, they, they, oh, my whole family did, and they were so proud of me. Um, my husband doesn't is not a crier, but when he saw me finish, he said that he has never been so proud of me in his whole entire life. And he's like, Christine, you got to do this again. Oh, he said, this wow. is the coolest thing I've ever seen in my life. That's awesome. You got to experience awesome. from the spectators' part. But you know what's interesting, Steve? Because you know, when people go back east. The city blocks are probably twenty yards deep. And she was talking about how they were just completely filled with people, strangers, mm -hmm. that you could feel the energy just kind of pushing you through. Thousands of people. From yeah. mile one to 26, you had people cheering you on the whole way. That's awesome, because yeah. I, I, I definitely it, need that. Like, somebody come roll me along, keep teaching me. <laughs> and it was raining, and it was cold there. Like, their cold is different than our yeah, cold. Yeah, that's, oh, a, that's East Coast. ugly yeah. cold. East, yes. East cold cold is ugly. Yeah. yeah. I, so, I always tell people uh, the times that I've been in Chicago and New York that it laughed at my West Coast West Coast clothing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I thought I had a jacket. No, you don't. Yeah. You don't. It just it's just the like, word Gore-Tex is not on your jacket. It's not working on the back east. Yes, I love that. So so is is there and I'm not saying this is I don't want to start rumors or anything, but is there a, a do you stay with the Greyhounds as a team? I or, do. Okay. Yeah. So so there's not a next level team that you aspire to go to. Um, right now, the Greyhounds is the fastest team here in Bakersfield. All right. Um, to be in. Okay. And there are different um, groups of runners, um, but the Greyhounds are the fastest. I don't say that like to brag, but they, they are. They're known so, to the So, so what's the next group? I'm interested in the names. Greyhounds, I, I get a visual picture. Um, there's, the, the, there's a donut shop runners. There's a bagel shop runners. Um, there's the different. Donut shop runners, the image that's in my head is not. Greyhounds just sounds a lot cooler. And a lot yeah. faster. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, they all run. We all compete against each other. Um, but the Greyhounds by far have to be um, the fastest. But I would say that the best team to be on is that one. Um, just building relationship. Everyone there yeah. is so nice. And they all have the same dream as in wanting to do better. And they all have the same goals as like, hey, I want to go to Boston. Like, I want to go here. Some of them are trying to do London. So like. They all have goals. You, you know, so so give me an idea. I mean, when I started bodybuilding, I've shared this on shows before with Steve, that, you know, it was gym against gym. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like today where you had a show. I mean, I was Gold Gym Venice, and it would be us against Uptown. That was my first show ever. Mm -hmm. And it was Uptown Gym. And there was a little bit of rivalry, and so yeah. the gym would shut down at noon, and you'd throw a um, bed sheet over a clothesline and project light bulbs this way. And you would do our thing. So it was like a com competitive thing. So you couldn't go from gym to gym because it felt like you were letting your gym guys down. Yeah. And so I didn't know if that was the same in running. You know what? With Bakersfield, it's not that way. But I will say um, our competitors are Visalia. They have um, Visalia running group. So a lot of times when we come up to a race, they're our competitors. Uh -huh. So we're always wanting to do better than the Visalia joggers. Is, 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 it, is it like a c c competitive thing where... You don't socialize with them or oh yeah just, we socialize with them 
We're all but friends. you're out to beat them. Yeah. Now, now the, when you're saying teams, it just made me think about all the team stuff that goes on. Uh, is there a team med medal? So do you guys get a medal as yeah, a team Yeah, actually placing? there is. Uh, there's um, there's called the series. Um, it's called the Hell of a Half, Judgment Day, and Heavenly Half. It's a series of runs. and The Hell of a Half yeah. is so, the one with like in July. So in the, the series that they do, they give a team award. And the Greyhounds usually take it. Uh, so it's like, it, it goes by like, by placement. So you got the, your top three girls, your top three guys as an age group too. So, I so love when, that. They, when they invited you to join, how did that expectation fear feel? Because I know that, like it's, I, I think it was the, like, oh, wow, I got to live up to something now. I mean, yeah, that... I, I was excited and nervous at the same time. Um because you said you guys just win. Yeah. So that's, I mean, you're invited to it like, hey, we're coming with the winning team. Like, yeah. oh. Um, it was on the bike trail. I was running, and they invited me to um, join their group. But it, I was I was nervous at first. But once I got to know everyone and how nice they were, it was easy afterwards. So, so it's like when somebody finds out you're a runner, they say, which club do you run with? What's that, Pastor? When, when, when somebody finds out you're a runner, they go, who do you run with? Yeah. Is Sometimes that, is, they, they'll ask you. Well, I mean, it's like like yeah. see Steve, you know, I see somebody and they, you know, I see somebody with a nos shirt. In. Yeah. I saw somebody come in the gym the other day and they had a nos shirt in. I I understand mm -hmm. they are a, a person that has a ability to lift heavy weights. Mm -hmm. You know, because they lift at nos. We all wear the same like so when we um, do a race, we'll all wear the greyhound tank tops. We have greyhound shirts, long sleeves. So we'll mm -hmm. all run like so. Our coaches say, make sure you're wearing your blue greyhound shirt. Or make sure you're wearing your white or your red. So we have different colors. Is there somebody that started it? Are they still involved? Um, yes, it's Shane Goslin. Ah, Shane, good job. Yes. Good job. Steve, you got the last word. I am interested in one marathon. Okay. Well, actually two. I'll never do them. But it's only because of the medals. The Star Wars one. Okay. And the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the what is it? The superhero ones. And the medals look so cool. Yeah. Now... Compared to the Boston Marathon, would that just be like a, a walk in the park to do the, 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 the Star Wars run? Um, no, because you're running 26 miles. Okay, so it is it is just as long to get that medal. Yeah, well, it depends. If, if you're doing, you if you're doing like a full marathon, a it's 26 miles. So 26 miles is 26 miles. No matter what, huh? Yeah, so. <laughs> does, does it, can I, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to look for the cheat code. So if you just enter it and run a half a mile, do you get a medal? Yeah, um, well. You have to finish it. Oh. You have to finish the so. I, you had me at a half a mile. I, like, I, I did. Go, I was like, I, I thought I had the mile cheat code. Me a Vader coat. Yeah. <laughs> no, you, you have to complete it in order to get the medal. <sighs> but I mean, twenty six miles is twenty six miles. Even if you're doing. Um, could you walk the whole thing? You could walk it. I don't want yeah. to walk either. it with you, Steve, no. just to get the medal. No, because I'd be hungry and I have to stop and eat like four times. <laughs> You'll be surprised. There's a lot of people that shock me that run marathons and i'm like wow so yeah. that's awesome yeah i love it christine anything you want to tell somebody out there that may be thinking about running and are hesitant what would you tell them yeah i was i would encourage you to try it um invest in good running shoes i was going to ask but, you about running how often do you go through running shoes about three months every three months every three months. and now, they're about 150 dollars to 200 dollars a shoe so and you have to get rid of them at the, mm -hmm. right now when you say running shoes just so people understand it's like a lifting belt. There's a yes. difference between buying a belt off the rack and having a belt built to lift heavy weights. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know you guys do not go and get a pair of Nike 270s, slap them on your feet and talk about, I'm getting ready to run this huge race with these generic shoes. Mm -hmm. not, and Nike's not a generic company, but they're generic shoes I picked up at Foot Locker. Yeah. You, you, where do you guys get your shoes from? Um, I personally buy my shoes from Running Warehouse. Mm -hmm. um, they sell running shoes, but you yeah, buy them I, the I I don't run in um, Nikes either. But um, you can buy them there or Dicks. Dicks, now, you... Dicks Sporting Goods good just because you could try them on, and if they didn't work, you could um, they have a good exchange policy where you can exchange them and get a different shoe. So, is there a place where you go? You put your foot down. I've seen the. The Dr. Scholl commercial, whether you put your foot on there and it tells you this foot works. Good. Uh -huh. I didn't know about New Balance. I used to train a young lady that ran, and I didn't know the numbers on New Balance represented a certain type of foot with a certain type of stride 
in yeah. a certain type of race. I was like, I just was like, oh, these are cool shoes. I like them because they come in different colors. I didn't yeah. know what they meant. That each shoe and their number represented a certain way to run. Mm -hmm. Now, when you first did it, did when you first picked your first pair of shoes out, did somebody look at your foot, do the whole thing, uh, set you up? I did it for myself because I used to, before I worked at the church, I used to work at a running specialty store. Okay. Oh, wow. So I know that I needed a shoe that has stability in it because my um, foot tends to pronate sometimes. So when I go looking for a shoe, I'll look for a shoe that I know that's gonna support my feet. Um, so I can tell you if you pronate or supinate, I can tell you, hey, you, you should be in this shoe or that shoe. So. So, and so I, basically I keep coming back to the shoes because when I talk to people about lifting, and they ask me, Steve, look at my squat, look at my deadlift. The first thing I do is I look down at their feet. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And I tell them, you have on the wrong shoe to do the yes. thing that you're trying to do because the body does a certain thing be according to a certain shoe. So how how important is the shoe to the foot to the marathon so oh, people can so have hard. an understanding of like, no, if you're going to do this, dedicate yourself and get yourself a good pair of shoes. I would say shoes are the most important thing um, because they're keeping your body to do the motions that you're expecting it to do, you know what I mean? So if I didn't have a good pair of running shoes, I wouldn't be able to run the way I do, you know yeah. what I mean? Yes, yes, no. I, I, and, and, but, and I would have to um, keep track of my mileage on them. So once I hit 300 miles, I would have to toss them, buy a new pair. And I'm gonna tell you something, running 60 miles a week, you have to toss pairs of shoes all the time. So, but no. yes, shoes are important. No. Do you guys toss them or do you guys donate them? And uh, we donate them. Good. Yeah. Okay. We'll donate them. But do they do? Do you, do you donate them with the precautionary they've been used up? And they know they've been used. That's the thing. Okay. Yeah. Because um, I was just a lot thinking of, about a lot of the a lot of kids uh, and a lot of people that can't afford those type of shoes. Where, mm -hmm. you, where would they look at getting to be able to receive a pair of shoes if you know somebody that's into running? but they can't afford to get a good pair of running shoes. Do you guys have like a website or someplace? Um, I don't have a website, but I know a lot of these races that we enter, they have a place where you take your old shoes and they donate donate it to the kids. Okay. So I'm all about that. Yes. Yeah. I, I like to recycle. Yes. It's a great question. That's why he's on the show. He asks all the great questions. Christine, anything you want to leave the audience with? Just uh, for well, you, you've, you've been a fantastic Yes, oh, thank you. You really have been. I would just say I encourage you just to go after your dreams. It, yes. it may not be running; it could be working out, body lifting. Mm -hmm. Just do what makes you happy mm -hmm. and see where it gets you. I like it. I like it. Steve, tell them again where you're at because they uh, need to talk to you about nutrition and physical fitness. We are located at seven four two zero District Boulevard, right across the street from Nestle. Hope to see you guys soon. Yes, glad you sh uh, 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 tuned in to us today. Share us, like us subscribe if you want to drop a comment in the comment section if you give us any ideas for any shows i mean love to hear it right Steve? you know what real quick before we sign off where can somebody get a hold of you at that has because i know there's going to be question do you have a social they're media? not calling us for running I'm yeah that's for that. sure do you have a social media or the i do House? have a social media um you can follow me on um, instagram christine purcell and You'll see a lot of my running on it, so they can follow me on there. Um, they can even call me at the church office mm -hmm. if they really want to get a hold of me. I'm yep. there pretty much every day. Yep, yep. That's 661-325-2251. So. One. One. Yep. I don't say that as jazzy as Steve does, <laughs> but... Uh, it's, it's my DJ experience. And if they're interested in joining That's the true. Greyhound group, um, they can let me know that, too. We're, we're going to be across the street from a meatpacking place, right? Mm -hmm. East Brundage. Yeah, it's just kind of they're building a new building. as a meat processing facility. Mm. So... Become friend with them. Come across. Come, yeah, so, <laughs> hey, hey, I didn't think about that, Steve. I, I don't. I don't overindulge anymore. <laughs> hey, have a great day. Five Eleven Media Group, faith, family, and freedom. We believe in that in Christ.